remember that the best way to study is to take practice tests. And if you can't find good practice tests, build your own and learn while you do it using the Learn My Test Study tool. It's absolutely free at LearnMyTest.com. And check in our description down below. You can see a link to a practice test that I created on Learn My Test, and you can take it. So check it out in the link below. Uh, so what we're going to talk about now is variables, psychological constructs, and operational definitions. And these are really important things when you're trying to learn about psychological research. So we're going to jump to a PowerPoint real quick and just look over some things. So if you think of what is a variable, so a variable is anything that varies. And I know that's kind of an obvious definition, but let's just, you know, vary. So if you think of gender, right, let's, let's think of that. So you can be a male, you can be a female, you can identify as non-binary, you can identify as gender neutral, you can identify as, um, as a transgender male, a transgender female. So there's a lot of different options that you can pick as gender. So gender would be a variable because it does vary. Weight, for example, is also a variable. You can weigh 100 pounds, you can weigh 150 pounds, you can weigh, you know, 250 pounds. I mean, if you're really big, you can weigh 400 pounds. Uh, so variables do um, vary. And uh, weight is something that you can just get on the scale and measure, and it'll tell you this is how much I weigh. So if you think about, you know, weight, it's, it's pretty straightforward, right? Height is another one. You can just get out a tape measure and measure how tall you are or measure, you know, the length and width of a wall, and that's pretty easy to measure. Um, with psychology, it's a little bit more complicated because you're measuring things like anxiety and depression and, and things that you can't really just see. And so that makes it a little bit harder. And so uh, anxiety is called a construct. It's a psychological construct because it's, it's not something you can tangibly see and it's, it, it has to do with psychology, right? So uh, the constructs are measured using operational definitions. And operational definitions is how we're going to measure that construct. So let me give you some examples of constructs and operational definitions. So we know anxiety and depression as, one, as an example of one. Let's, let, let me show you um, a questionnaire called the GAD-7. So the Generalized Anxiety Disorder 7-Item Scale is a operational definition of anxiety, right? So you answer these four, seven questions um, in the past two weeks, and it's on a scale of zero to three, right? So zero means you've experienced these not at all, and then three means you've had it every day, right? So then you would go through this, fill it out, and uh, you'd get a score of zero to 21, right? So zero would mean, man, you're you're doing great. You're not having any anxiety. And then 21 would mean, oh my God, you're you're experiencing very unbearable anxiety, right? So let me give you another example. So depression is obviously another construct that is very big in psychology, right? Um, so an operational definition of depression is, we'll look right here, is the PHQ-9, patient health questionnaire. It's often given to, uh, by, uh, you know, primary care doctors and, uh, and inpatient rehabilitation center settings um, and at other hospital settings to measure depression. And so you see little president are interested in doing things, feeling down, depressed, or hopeless in the past two weeks, not at all, some days, more than half, or nearly every day. And so at the end, if you look here, there's, uh, you know, so you, you, there's nine questions and three is the max, so you can get a total of 27. So if you look here, uh, it gives you a score and how much, how depressed you are. So if you get a one to four, you're not really depressed. Whereas if you get a 20 to 27, man, you're, you're, you're experiencing a lot of depression, right? So that's, these are operational definitions of, this is an operational definition of depressive symptoms, right? So let's just think of something even more simple, like, uh, like academic performance, right? So academic performance, um, you can measure, you can operationalize that in a lot of different ways, right? You can ask people what their GPA is. You can ask people what their grade in a specific class is. You can go to the registrar and say, hey, I want to get your grades from the registrar because I think you're going to lie and tell me your grades are higher than they really are. Um, you can ask them for their GRE score, or SAT score, or ACT score. Those also can represent academic performance. So really, there's a lot of different ways to measure different variables. And so it's important to define 
how you're measuring them because that is important in a research study. And the more measurements you have, like anything else, the better your research study is going to be. So that's just a rule of thumb. So let's look at um, let's look at some examples of some. Uh, let's let's take an example here. So I know that um, I'm going to skip forward a, a couple slides real quick. Um, so based on what you know about and ignore the antisocial behavior. Based on what you know about attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, what I want you to do is pause the video and try to just off the top of your head come up with some ways to operationalize or measure attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Come up with some ways to measure that. Um, and then when you're done unpausing the video, I'll give you some ways that, that psychologists measure it. All right. so. Here's some ways to measure ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. So you can ask parents, you can give them a questionnaire about ADHD symptoms. You can ask children, you can ask the child about their own ADHD symptoms. You can ask teachers what they observe about their ADHD symptoms, inattention, hyperactivity. You can go to the child's classroom and observe them. You can go to their home and observe them. You can go to them in different settings. You can give them a selective attention test. You can give a child another test of executive functioning because ADHD is an executive functioning disorder. You can also see if their performance on is on what their performance is on different cognitive tests and see if it's consistent over time because ADHD people can do a lot better on t during times when they're paying attention, but when they're not paying attention, they'll do terrible. So sometimes their ability to pay attention is different based on you know the different. Uh, you know, they're based on uh, how well they're paying attention, right? So there's different ways to assess how well an operational definition is really working. And so we're going to, I'm going to first talk about reliability. So let's just talk about, we'll go back to um, the PHQ-9. So the PHQ-9, if we were going to assess the reliability, what that would mean is that every time you give the PHQ-9, that it would uh, that you would get around the same score, right? So you would get if I gave the same person the PHQ nine two two different times in you know three weeks, they would probably make around the same score. Um, if you know I gave them a test you know a, a month from now and they made different scores, um, then you know you may want to look at that test. Now with depression, I will say that it, it is a mood and it can change, so that maybe that wasn't the best example. But let's say I gave someone an intelligence test, right? Intelligence is supposed to be stable over time. So if I gave you an intelligence test and one week it said you were, you know, you had a genius IQ and then the next week it said, you know, you were intellectually disabled, that's not a very reliable test, right? And if, if you don't have a reliable test, then your study is done if you use an unreliable test, right? Um, so internal consistency is do all the questions appear to be measuring the same thing? So let's look at this with the GAD7. So do, do, do people that are depressed, do they have little, do they feel tired and have little energy? Do they feel down, depressed, or hopeless? Do they have trouble falling asleep, staying asleep, or sleeping too much? Do they have little interest or pleasure in doing things? Does this appear like it's measuring all the same things? Yes, right? So we if we did some statistics on this, we probably would find that they all are closely related and they all are measuring the same thing. So that would be the example of, you know, reliability, right? So validity is is different because it's is the test measuring what it's supposed to measure. So you can have a really reliable test, but if it's not measuring what it's supposed to measure, then it's not good anyway, right? So I can have a test that that uh, an IQ test that gives you the same score every time, but if it's it, but if the IQ test doesn't predict how well you're going to do in school, how well you learn things, uh, you know, all that, then it's not a good IQ test, right? Because IQ should predict learning ability, right? So with criterion validity, if I had an IQ test, it should predict how well you do in, you know, school, right? IQ should be related to academic performance. It should predict how well you do on specific, um, you know, on specific uh, you know, achievement tests and things like that, right? 
So we would expect IQ to be related to that. Construct validity is, is the test associated with other assessments of the same construct. So if I was using, if I made an IQ test and I wanted to make sure it's, it was construct valid, what I would do is I would try to see if, it's, if scores on my IQ test are the same as scores on other IQ tests that would give him. And then content is, do experts in the field agree that this test is a measures what in, you know intelligence is or what depression is or and you know so that's another big thing if experts don't agree that this measures this then that is then it may not be a valid test so content validity is do experts agree and then face validity is does it appear to be measuring what it's supposed to be measuring so let's just look at the you know PHQ-9 um, does the PHQ-9 look like it's measuring depression you know, feeling down, depressed, hopeless, little person. So this is pretty face valid, right? It, it it looks like it's measuring depression, and it pretty much it pretty much is uh, measuring depression. So I want to uh, jump and just go really quickly to talk with you guys briefly about um, some research questions. Okay, so these are some research questions that I've been gotten given by students in the past, and so I just want to you know point out that these made these are probably not the best research questions for a number of reasons but um let and I'm no no, no reason to make fun of them because I know you guys are you know you guys are just learning research but uh here's some examples so what makes up the mind of a serial killer so do you have a variable x and a variable y here do you have two variables no and so you just have uh, a serial killer that doesn't vary and um mind doesn't vary Psychopath doesn't vary here, so there's no variables here. Um, so ethics, um, does that vary? So there's no variables in any of these questions. So you need to have variables in your research questions, okay? That's very important. None of these have... Um, so here you have music. Yes, music can vary. There's different types of music, but, um, you know, that's, that's an interesting one. But then there's no variable here. So adolescence, that's not a variable. So make sure that you have two variables. Variable one, how does, vari does variable one affect variable two? That should be your research question. So here's a decent one. Um, how does college major affect mental health? So college major is a variable because you can have different college majors and mental health can vary. You can have really bad mental health. You can have really great mental health. So um, this one does, does fit. But I would challenge you guys, instead of using the word mental health, use words like depression or well-being. Those are better. So depression and well-being are different. So you can not be depressed and still have low well-being. Um, so that is an example. Uh, you know, you can you can not be really depressed, but you can also not be really happy. So they are two different things. And if you want to look at both of them, that's fine too. So thank you so much for watching this video. And remember that the best way to study is to take practice tests. And if you can't find good practice tests, build your own and learn while you do it using the Learn My Test Study tool. And remember to check out the practice tests in the description of this video. Thank you again.